Every year, the Pittsburgh chapter of the Baseball Writers Association of America selects an MVP of the team in their chapter. The Pittsburgh chapter has selected, as of yesterday, Brian Reynolds for that honor. I, I might have gone a different route. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning, I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins that I hope you'll check out. Pirates 3, Cardinals 2 with a walk-off walk by O'Neill Cruz in the bottom of the ninth to avoid 100 losses which the Pirates can still do by winning again tonight and tomorrow afternoon. Don't get your hopes up. (laughs) Good things don't happen to teams that aren't even trying, at least not at the management level. They're going to lose their 100th game. But that doesn't mean that there haven't been some positives scattered along the way. Reynolds, of course, is one of those with 26 homers, team best OPS, team best everything, and and he is, as Derek Shelton called him yesterday, the team's best player. He's out there every day. He plays through pain. He's in one of the most important positions in center field. He handles it professionally, occasionally, dynamically. I'm taking absolutely nothing away from Reynolds. Believe me, I have all the respect in the world for this kid. My MVP, maybe it's because I place so much focus myself on seeing who gets better, who rises up, who leaps above expectations. And in the case of Mitch Keller, maybe he just fulfilled expectations that we've had for a long time. So he went from being a disappointment to someone that you really feel like you can count on going into the future. Mitch, of course, pitched last night, five innings, two runs. It's pretty much what he's been doing ever since late May when he was bumped from the rotation, came back, and was just a new guy, was an actual pitcher, not a thrower, showed all kinds of guts out there as opposed to shrinking from situations as he had in the past. Mitch is the success story of the Pittsburgh Pirates in 2022. The success story. And maybe that's the better designation to give him. Here's a little bit of what Mitch had to say last night after the game about the season that he's had. Up and down first first month. Um, I thought I did pretty well in the first month. Just kind of just some bad luck here and there. Again, just seemed like anything was falling through. And then... Uh, just going to the bullpen and working on a new sinker and you know, a new slider and then just kind of putting it all together and uh, just kind of rolling with it after after that. Um, yeah, just proud of myself for how I hung in there and just kept going because I know I'm a good pitcher. I know I've done it in the past. And, uh, just, yeah, just felt really good after after that point. He knows it, too. You can hear that, can't you? He knows he's broken through. Doesn't mean he won't have struggles again. Doesn't mean he won't have lousy starts from time to time. Almost all pitchers do. But he knows he's made it to the other side. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of... Steak on a stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800-degree stone, and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. One of my favorite things about Mitch, and this goes back three years. This goes back right after he'd made his major league debut in Cincinnati. It was the following spring training. And I asked him about being a staff ace. Ace is not a term that I use lightly. A lot of people do. First of all, they don't really exist in major league baseball anymore. 
You don't have 32 start horses with sub-3 ERAs roaming around. There's no more than a handful of true aces in baseball. Being an ace doesn't just mean being the best starting pitcher on your staff. Being an ace means being an ace. I don't know that the Pirates have had one of those since, like, what, Doug Drabeck? Right? Maybe a couple years of Francisco Cordova. Todd Ritchie had a year where he seemed like one of those for a little while. Uh, Oliver Perez did it for a year. And, yeah, you see what I mean? There's just not a bunch of them. A.J. Burnett, when he was here, as lauded as he was, wasn't really ace level the way he was, let's say, before that. And you know what? Mitch isn't either. However, what I liked was that three years ago when I brought this up with him, fully expecting him to dump all over it and play it down, whatever, he said, you know what? I've been the ace on every staff I've ever been on. It's an area where I'm comfortable. I expect to be that for this team moving forward. Might not happen right away, but I expect to be that. Well, it did take a while. It did take a while. But he is Right now, the guy in this rotation. And he has to be the guy for at least the next couple of years. He might not be the best actual pitcher. That might be Rowanzi Contreras. It might be Luis Ortiz. It might be Johan Oviedo. Heck, it might be JT Brubaker, though I'm not seeing that. It might be somebody who comes up from the minors, depending on how quickly Quinn Priester and others arrive. But Mitch is the guy, singular, on this staff who's broken through and who knows it. And that in and of itself comes with value. Sure, it would be wonderful if Ben Charrington goes out and gets a significant starting pitcher over the winter. I'll take Jose Quintana, who again... (laughs) Looked like Jose Quintana last night, just in the wrong uniform. I'll take him back as a free agent. I'll give him a nice contract, a year or two, something that he couldn't have had if he hadn't worked with the Pirates the way he did through the spring and the early part of this summer. But I'll also take an anchor to that rotation, and maybe that's the better terminology for Mitch and the level to which he's risen. He can be the anchor. He can be the stability for this rotation. Again, look at his game log. All through 2022, at least again, once you got past that rough patch in mid-May, that's what he's been. He's been stable. He's been dependable. That's an anchor. When we come back, J1Q. from Phil who says, hey DK, I've heard you say several times on the show that while you aren't pleased with what's happening at the major league level right now, overall that Ben Charrington and company have a good plan in place. And I assume that's in reference to the talent and potential that they have in the system. I was hoping that you could elaborate on what it is about the overall direction of the team that gives you confidence. Sorry in advance if I misunderstood your stance. Actually, Phil, you did. But that's not your fault, because my stance is way more nebulous than most people should be able to gather the first time they hear it. It's a lot more basic than who they have in the minors or what they have coming. In fact, this year, for me, that's been a disappointment. When I'm referring to the approach, I'm going all the way back to sitting with Charrington and Bob Nutting in that room at 115 Federal when he was hired, and he laid out what he wanted to do. Didn't say how long. Didn't say how much payroll would go down. (laughs) Didn't say that he'd hang on to positional coaches that might not be worth hanging on to. But the approach, the general approach, was what this franchise has needed for 20 years and hadn't adopted before he arrived. In the simplest form, it's this. 
Charrington's aim was to acquire as much high ceiling talent and infuse it into the organization to create mass quantity as well as ideally mass quality. The risk that you run in taking that approach is that, well, sometimes high ceiling guys fizzle out. They turn into nothing. They're not stable, to use that term again from the opening segment. They're not guys that you can count on and depend on because they don't necessarily always develop dependable skills. Let me give you an example here. When Neil Huntington was GM and he was making trades, with very few exceptions, and going all the way back to Jason Bay, Xavier Nady, and running right through Garrett Cole, he would line up a bunch of guys that were AAA but major league ready. I'll translate that for you. We really can't scout particularly well, but we at least know these guys will only suck so much, so we're going to acquire them. Get it now? Whereas, if you make riskier moves and say, wow, this kid, he can hit the ball to the moon. He can do things that others can't. Now, in fairness, it was Huntington who acquired O'Neill Cruz in the Tony Watson trade. That was a perfect example of the kind of trades he should have been making all along, especially with his most valuable pieces, most of whom I just named. Charrington's approach was going to be that these were the players he'd try to get. He'd go for the flamethrowers. He'd go for the guys uh, that could hit the ball a mile or that could run really fast, but they might not necessarily be super polished in all baseball skills, and thus, they'd be a risk. There's still a risk. Look at the makeup of the current roster. Look at Rodolfo Castro. That's a perfect example right there. Rodolfo Castro looks at times like somebody you can build around. And then at other times you're going, whoa, dude, what are you doing? Or you'll see a slump that'll turn you off. That's the risk. But for a team like the Pirates with their payroll, if you get a bunch of these guys, if you create, in essence, an academy of these types, like think of Professor... Uh, what was his name, Xavier in, in the X-Men, where he had the mansion and had all these mutants in and he's trying to get them all to become something organized and only X amount of them, no pun intended, were going to become actual X-Men. That's kind of what you're looking for here. And it's the right approach. I'm putting that word right there in bold face underlined with fireworks shooting out of it. It's about an approach. It's about a plan. I have liked and still like the approach from day one. The execution is a separate matter, as Charrington himself would acknowledge. I haven't been wild about the execution in places, and I definitely haven't been wild about the pace and the disrespect, the open disrespect that's happened at the Pittsburgh level in 2022, I felt all of that could be avoided, and I really feel it could and should be avoided in 2023, even though I know, I mean know, that it won't be. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. When there will not be a hundredth loss, they're actually not going to lose a hundred. This is it. They're going to sweep. 